as the assistant celebrant, I say thank you. God bless you, Sir Pastor Gideon. We love you with the love of God. And we pray that the Lord will continue to keep you. The Lord will continue to strengthen you for what he has called you to do. And that, um, <laughs> amen, amen as well. Shall we just um, rise up and stretch our hands towards him and pray for him? Just pray from the depth of your heart. Just pray for your pastor. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. to take him last year but you said no for the days when his back was against the wall but you made a way you are the captain over his life you saved him you delivered him and you kept him and Lord we are grateful that we are not mourning today because of him Lord we say thank you that you give him the grace and the strength to carry on in you, Lord, we say thank you. That you shower him with your blessings, Lord, we say thank you. Father, we just say thank you. For your son, Lord, we say thank you. For this church, Lord, we say thank you. For our individual lives, Lord, we say thank you. For your word that is being preached in this place, we say thank you. For the leadership of you over our lives, Lord, we say thank you. Receive all the glory, O God. We lay all of his crowns and our crowns at your feet today, Lord. And we know it is just because of you. It's not by work of righteousness. It's not by anything we've done right. But because you love us. 
and you continue to love us. Thank you for being a good father unto us. Thank you, Jehovah Nessie. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Can we have our seats? Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The theme we have for this month is divine invasion. Divine invasion. And as we were just celebrating our pastor over the, uh, the week up to today, I thought about certain things about him. I have the sermon here, but I'll share a little bit. And most of you, if you're watching us for the first time, will probably be the person that might not know a little bit of Pastor Jide's history. And I see it as a true story of a divine invasion. So if you've heard about his story, you would know the kind of life he lived before he came to Jesus Christ. Um, there's still a nickname that they call him when he's um, high school you know, students back then, that we, they were in high school together, who would talk, and that's ambulance. And that's because he would fight you until he draw blood. That was the person he was. But Jesus invaded his life. <laughs> Jesus invaded and Jesus, and I believe for every one of us, even if you were born into a Christian home and you lived all your life, you know, been in church and all that, that particular day came that Jesus invaded your life. Whether you asked him to or because he looked at you as a good and loving father and he said, I have a destiny for you. And you're not going in the right way that will lead to that purpose. So then he would arrest you, just like he did to Saul on the way to Damascus. And he said, no, enough is enough. I will not let you self-destruct. I'm going to invade, and I'm going to draw you out of that pit that you're putting yourself into. So as we continue in the service and in talking about divine invasion, today is Palm Sunday also. And I thought to myself, wow, Palm Sunday, what happened? In the account that we have in the Bible, Matthew 21, verse 12 to 14, I will just go over it. Jesus asked them to bring him a donkey. And he wrote it, you know, when you read children's Bible, or even in, in our adult Bible, I believe it will say triumphant entry into Jerusalem. That is a divine invasion. So I don't know what you're believing God for. I don't know what the situation is. Tap into today being that Palm Sunday that Jesus rose, rode triumphantly into Jerusalem and ask that he will ride triumphantly into your life and put an end to whatever that situation is in the name of Jesus. When we look through that account, we will see that when Jesus got to Jerusalem, it wasn't for a fun fair. It wasn't just to go say, oh, I'm here. The Bible recorded that he went into the temple and he saw things going on in there that shouldn't. And Jesus took whip, if I'll use that word, to the people that were selling and buying in the temple and he drove them out of the temple. So when divine invasion happens, it happens to clean out the dirtiness, the filthiness in a particular location. It could be a person's life. It could be a physical location like we're sitting in. When Jesus rides triumphantly into that place, he took whip and he chased them out and he cleansed the temple. He said, my father's house is not a marketplace. So he came to restore to restore righteousness, to restore holiness, to restore his father's house back to the original place that it should be at. And I believe he will do the same thing for us this month in the name of Jesus. Can we open our Bibles to the book of 1 Samuel? That's where our theme is for. 1 Samuel chapter 30. 1 Samuel chapter 30. From verse 1, we see that David and his men returned back home to Ziklag. And alas, the place had been burnt. Everything had been taken. Because, you know, while they were gone, the Amalekites had come and raided the place. And the Bible recorded that when they saw that, David and his men broke down in tears and they cried. They were sorrowful. They all cried because everything they loved, everything they owned, 
had been taken away. But in verse 7, David said to the priest, bring me the ephod. So Abiathar brought it. Then David asked the Lord, should I chase after this band of raiders? Will I catch them? And the Lord told him, yes, go after them. You will surely recover everything that was taken from you. Now, this is, so when we talk about invasion, there are two sides to it. There is the negative one and then there's the positive one. So in this case, the negative one had happened. Their land had been raided. Everything that belonged to them had been taken away. And now he asks of the Lord, what should I do? And God said, pursue, you will catch up with them and you will recover all. So there's a promise of a divine invasion. But that promise of a divine invasion will not take place until you move. So David could have said to the men, oh, God said, you know, we should pursue, we will recover all. They might sit down and start strategizing, when should we, how should we, and time will start going. But God gave the command and immediately they went. And even though they wanted to go immediately, they realized 200 men were too exhausted. That's in verse 10. They were too exhausted to go with them. So they left them behind. They said, no, we're not going to sleep on this commandment. We're not going to sleep on this order that has been given. We will go immediately. So they continued on with 400 men. And my prayer from that is that at your time of restoration, at the time when you need to make a move, the Lord will energize you that you will not faint in your day of battle in the name of Jesus. So these 400 men continued on on behalf of the whole group. And as the Lord has spoken, they did pursue, they overtook, and they recovered all. If you go to verse 17 to 19. So David and his men rushed in amongst them and slaughtered them throughout that night and the entire day until evening. So tell me, the same men that were in verse, you know, when they got back to Ziklag, they were tired. The Bible said they, they wept, saw, they were Weak. How, in a few verses later, were they able to fight and destroy and recover all? It goes to show us for us that divine invasion means it is divinely powered. It's not something you can do in your own power. If you rely on your own strength, then you will fail. But when God tells you to pursue something, you know that it is not because you have the energy both physically and spiritually for it. So we depend on him daily for the grace to carry us through. I like the song that the choir finished with this morning. It said, Holy Father, we wait on you for fire. We need that fire. We need that power. We need that inner strength that will keep us going till we conquer, recover all that we need to recover. And so shall it be to us in the name of Jesus why do we as Christians need divine invasion? Why do we need divine invasion? Number one point I have here is for a change of status. For you to get a change of status, status or status, whichever one you call it, you need divine invasion. We can bring to mind the story of Hannah. Hannah had been going to Shiloh for so many years. But this year came that she said, this will not just be another year. Something has to happen. And she tarried at that temple, praying. Until the priest saw her and was like, what are you doing, woman? She said she's a woman of, you know, sorrowful heart. She's praying to God from the deep sorrow in her heart. And the priest said, well, the Lord will answer your prayer. And the Lord did. So we can say in that situation that it was our day for divine invasion. Now, the, the, the important part we should note there is she was found at the right place, at the right time. Everyone else had gone drinking and feasting and all that, but she tarried at the temple and she continued praying until God gave her a solution. As we tarry in God's presence this year, this month, this day, I mean, we're even doing the Alpha and Omega Challenge. I like, we've been encouraged this morning that, you know, it's a sacrifice to be in God's presence. As we do that, I pray that God will look at that as diligence and faithfulness on our behalf and will invade our lives and give us that breakthrough and miracle we are praying for in Jesus' name. Another reason is for a change of name. 
Because sometimes our names might be the problem. For majority of us that are from Africa and those watching me from other parts of the world, you know, there are certain things that happen when a child is being named. And you weren't there. Well, technically you were there. But you weren't there when you were named because you had no influence on what was going on. So whatever name you've been given, you don't know what is attached to that name. In the Bible, Jacob was named Jacob. But at the stage, God had to arrest him. And that's in Genesis 32, verse 22 to 32. The angel wrestled with him. You know, God had to, like, God had to, like, come and help the angel because he won't let him go. And God said, your name will be changed from Jacob to Israel. The same thing we can see happen to Saul after Saul had his experience on the road to Damascus. And that's in the book of Acts, chapter 9, verse 1 to 22. His name was changed to Paul. So sometimes we might need a physical name change. And for those of us that like nicknames, maybe your nickname is what's causing you trouble. So maybe it's time to drop that nickname. As simple as it might be, as fun as it might be, it could be a barrier to something. I pray that the Holy Spirit will open our inner eyes to see the changes that we need to make in the name of Jesus. Another reason that God will invade our lives, cause a divine invasion, is to bring us healing. And I would like to read that story from the book of John, chapter 5, verse 5 to 9. John, chapter 5, verse 5 to 9. Okay, thank you. One of the men lying there had been sick for 38 years. Can you imagine? 38 years. That's two years to be 40. That's a long time. When Jesus saw him and knew he had been ill for a long time, he asked him, would you like to get well? The man was just sitting there. His focus was on that pool. Let me get someone to put me in there. That is where my healing lies. But Jesus had a different plan for him than that pool. So I pray that the day that Jesus will invade our lives like this man, we won't start telling stories like he did. Let's continue reading. I can't, sir, the sick man said, for I have no one to put me in the pool when the water bubbles up. Someone else always gets there ahead of me. Let's continue. Jesus told him, stand up, pick up your mat and walk. Now let's analyze it a little bit, you know. I come to you. Oh, would you like... $10,000. I know we all love money. I like money too. So let's use money example. Uh, would you like 10000 Would you like if I give you a check of $10,000 and you're like, ah, you know, I've been trying to do something, something. Nobody has been able to help me, this and that. And then we we'll go into all those stories that we like to tell sometimes. And maybe I only have two minutes to talk to you. And you're still talking. I can decide to put my check in my bag and leave. There were so many other people there that day that needed healing. And Jesus came to him directly. So in the process of talking, it's possible Jesus might say, this one is not ready. Let me move to the next person. But by virtue of divine invasion, his name was on that miracle for that day. I pray that the Lord will have mercy on us. That even when we try to shortchange ourselves, he will not be discouraged, right? It will, you know, when we look at the story of the... 99 sheep was safe and one had been lost. As a human shepherd, it's possible to say, I have 99. One decided to be stubborn. Let him go. It's possible. But the God we serve is a merciful God. That he knows what we need even before we ourselves realize we need it. So in the case of this man, Jesus was patient and merciful. And his response to all his ranting was, Rise up, pick up your mat. And that was the end of his problem. I pray that the Lord will invade our lives. And that miracle that we need to get us to the next level of our life, he will perform it in our lives in the name of Jesus. The last one that I have is that when God invades a man's life, it's to deliver him from lawful captive and unlawful captivity, whichever way it is. When God invades, it delivers. It delivers. And we'll see that um, Isaiah 49, 24 to 26. And I'll also read to us uh, Mark 3, 27, if I can have that one. Mark 3, 27. 
Because we're talking about the fact that, let's do Mark 3.27, please. That it is a divine invasion, meaning something you cannot do on your own, you know, on your own power. He says, let me illustrate this further. Who is powerful enough to enter the house of a strong man and plunder his goods? Only someone even stronger. Someone who could tie him up, then plunder his house. Who is that someone? Can, can I hear you? Who is that someone? Jesus. He's the only one that can give us that divine invasion. If we try to say in our own power and our strength, you're sizing somebody up. That maybe you think because you're bigger than them, you can tie them up. In the spiritual, no, you cannot. You cannot. It takes the grace of God. It takes the strength of God, divine invasion for us to get that deliverance. In the book of John 11, I'll close on that one, 11 verse 1 to 44, 44 it talks about a man named Lazarus that was dead. He had even been buried. But when Jesus appeared on the scene, the presence of Jesus and his simple prayer invaded that tomb that that man had been buried in. And all Jesus had to say was Lazarus come forth. And a man that had been dead for days, medically dead for days, that is impossible. But because of the divine invasion of the presence of God, even the tomb had to let go of Lazarus. And Lazarus came out. The God that we serve, when he invades, it is for a purpose. When he invades, it it is so his name can be glorified. We still talk about Lazarus being raised from the dead up till today. And that is the God that we serve. So as we rise up this morning and we pray, I don't know what you need God to invade your life over. I started with the testimony of our pastor. I don't know, maybe you have some, a member of your family that has just gone out of, you know, out of control. They need a divine invasion so that they won't shipwreck their destiny. Maybe there's a situation, there's something you've been praying over for years and it has been buried in that grave, in that tomb for more than four days. Jesus can bring it back to life. Maybe it's that situation you've prayed and prayed and pastors, everybody has prayed about it for you. This is your day to go to Shiloh and kneel at the altar and pray your heart out to Jesus so that you can get your divine invasion this month. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for your word. Thank you for the power in the name of Jesus. Thank you because that power breaks chains. It breaks yokes. Lawful captives are delivered by the power in your name. Even dead men rise to life by the power in your name. So today, Lord, we hold on to your name. To invade our lives. We hold on to your presence. To invade our lives. To invade every situation in our homes, in our marriages, in the life of our children, in our career, in our academic. Maybe it's an exam you've written over and over and you're about to give up on. Ask today that the Lord will invade that situation and turn it around for your good in the mighty name of Jesus. The God that we serve is a God that has good plans and thoughts towards us. He said before we were formed in our mother's womb, he already knew us. He ordained and predestined us to be light in the darkness of this world. We are called out for a purpose. We are a chosen generation. We are a royal priesthood. Our lives mirror the life of Jesus because he is our father. So Lord, we surrender all to you today, O oh God. Invade our lives, O oh God. Invade this church, O oh God. Invade our homes, O oh God. Divine invasion over every aspect of our lives. Even the one that we feel is going right. Even the ones that we feel is doing okay. We are asking for a next level. We are asking for promotion in the mighty name of Jesus. In the book of Genesis, it says, The Spirit of the Lord moved upon the earth and it was void without form. Whatever might be in our lives, O oh God, that is void and without form, we ask for your spirit to move over it today in the mighty name of Jesus. And we ask that your, your, your power, the power in your voice that brings things that are not to life. You said, let there be light. And immediately there was light. Father, let that voice speak into our lives today in the name of Jesus. Let it remove every form of darkness and bring us into light in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you because you've answered us. We give you all the glory. 
We magnify your name, Lord. For in Jesus Christ's name, we have prayed. Amen. God bless you. Hallelujah. Let's put those hands together for Jesus. Let's put those hands together for Jesus. We celebrate God in our lives. Praise the Lord. I want to say a very big thank you to the Church of God. Thank you so much for your prayers. Thank you for your love. Thank you for this bond of unity. I'm saying this not because you are here. I, uh, in my little walk with God, I have served in different ministries and different churches among different believers. I will not exchange this for any. This is this is this is home. This is this is the gathering of men who have a heart and a desire to serve God. And I am blessed to be serving this God at the same time and in this generation with every one of us. And please help me appreciate my wife. She's not just my wife. She is my mother. She is my soulmate. And God has made her my guiding angel. We thank God for you, Pastor Wumi. God bless you. I love you with the whole of my heart. Um, as we round up this morning, there is somebody that is part of this service. You have been having negative dreams for a while now and you are beginning to get concerned. Your dreams over and over has been, has been very negative that you will wake up and begin to pray, Lord, I don't want this, Lord, I don't want this. If you are here, can you please come forward? And if the person is online, you can join us. You don't have to come forward. You can just rise up on your feet. Um, we, we just want to pray and reject all those negativity that the enemy has been bringing upon your life that is actually affecting you spiritually is getting to a point where it's almost constituting fear in your heart. God bless you as you rise up. God bless you as you rise up. Um, can I ask Pastor Ayo, Pastor Tayo, and Pastor Wumi to just hold hands Pastor Wumi to the sister, Pastor Tayo and Pastor Ayo to the bread brothers. Just hold on with them. The Bible says, whatever two of us agree on earth shall be established in heaven. And if you are online with us, please just hold on with your wife or with your husband or with your child. Just hold on with them and agree today by the word of God that every negative invasion in the life of this individual, in their dreams, in their spiritual consciousness that the Lord will remove in the name of Jesus. Speak against those negative invasions. Every evil seed that the enemy may have planted into the soil of their heart in the dream, the Lord will erase, the Lord will wipe away. The Bible says when men sleep, slept, the enemy came and saw tears. We are going to pray this morning that every tears that the enemy has sown in their heart, in the dream, that the Lord will erase it in the name of Jesus. That the power of the Holy Ghost will erase it. Every negative invasion, every negative tears, every seed that God the heaven, my Father, has not planted into their life that the Lord will raise in the name of Jesus. As you are praying as a team, the Bible may declare that what two of us agree on earth shall be established. We agree to the Lord that Lord, you will send your angels to encompass these lives in the name of Jesus. We agree to the Lord that you will take away fear and instill faith in God in the life of these ones, in the mighty name of Jesus. We agree to the Lord that every plant that God has not planted into their life will be uprooted from the source, in the mighty name of Jesus. We agree to the Lord, according to your word, 
that these ones will manifest God in the name of Jesus. Fear will drive you away because the absence of faith is fear. And in this art, let faith be planted. Let faith in Christ Jesus, in the power of his might, and in the power of the Holy Ghost, be planted in these lives in the name of Jesus. Thank you, precious Father, for in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Shall we all share the grace in fellowship? May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. God bless you. We love you with the love of God. Thanks for coming.